Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's ProSIM webinar. So first, can you uh, tell me in the chat window or in the question window uh, in your panel that you can hear me clearly? Okay, I'm having some uh, yes, perfect. So I believe that everybody can hear me. That's perfect. Thank you very much for being here today. So today's webinar is about to start. It will last about an hour. And today's topic is energy audits, why and how to implement pinch analysis. Quentin Duval, one of our pinch analysis experts at ProSIM, is the speaker today. So you are a lot of people, so your microphones are off. To ask your questions, please use the dedicated window that is available in the panel. We will do our best to answer them all during this hour. If we can't, because there are too many questions, we will contact you after the webinar to answer your questions, so don't worry. So I will now let Quentin start. Hello, Quentin. Hi. So, hi everybody. I present myself. I am Quentin Duval, and today I will present you the pinch analysis. I first want to thank people all around the world for staying awake or for waking up earlier in the morning for this presentation. So, what is our stake? Uh, when we speak about pinch analysis, we speak about, uh, about energy. In France, recent studies show that 51 terawatt hour could be recovered over 100 degrees Celsius in the industry in France. Most of this energy is around 100 degrees Celsius and 200 degrees Celsius, following ADEM, which is a public institution of France dedicated to the environment and energy. Thus, 16% of the total fuel consumption in industry is wasted over 100 degrees Celsius. La large parts of this waste energy come from process industries such as refining, chemical and plastics, cement and glass, food industry, metal industry, and pulp and paper. The important consumers are the metal industries and chemical and plastic in France, which cover almost 50% of the waste heat over 100 degrees Celsius. To recover this waste heat, I will present you the pinch analysis. So what, it, what, what is the outline? For this presentation, first, we will see a brief overview of, as of ProSIM Plus and of ProSIM Society. What are the software of ProSIM and what are the services? Then we will see the pinch analysis, the principle of the methodology. Afterward, a short live demo will give you a short overview of our ProSIM Plus software and similar pinch. Then we will see how to use the pinch in advanced energy audits. And finally, we we'll conclude with some remarks. So what are the skills and competencies of ProSIM? ProSIM is a company which is dedicated for computer-aided process engineering. So ProSIM develops software for process modeling simulation and optimization. This software deals with thermodynamics, flow sheeting, equipment sizing, kinetics parameters for reaction and energy integration with the pinch technology, or also named pinch analysis. The following presentation presents you the energy integration, one of the skills of process. Different types of processes can be tackled by ProSIM Suite software. The domains are 
chemical and petrochemical, oil and gas production, petroleum refining, energy, and other subjects like air separation, carbon capture, biochemical. Our customers are operating companies and also engineering companies or manufacturer company for specific unit operations or calculations. Sorry. Simulation is used for conceptual design, for optimization, and for performance monitoring. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> for year to year, ProSIM historically developed specific functionality and relevant products in key domains, such as specialties chemical, gas, bioproduction, waste treatment, ammonia, and nitric plant and nuclear subjects. In this domain, ProSIM provides relevant software and prestigious customers because of the important expertise of ProSIM, especially in the energy field. ProSIM is based at Toulouse, South of France, and a subsidiary is located in the USA at Philadelphia. In addition, several retailers in the world cover over 1,000 clients in 73 countries. As you understand, ProSIM proposes you software and services. ProSIM proposes different software for batch or continuous processes, energy ma managing, management, dynamic simulation, nitric plant or other subjects like thermodynamics. Today we will speak about especially about stimulus pinch. This software can be linked with ProSIM Plus software, a steady state simulator, in order to extract data for the energy analysis. What about our services? With ProSIM, you are guided during the software use by the expertise of the support, but also by the training session on our software. ProSIM performs also process studies or advanced energy audits. Then we can implement your own code or particular functionalities directly in our software to make the software user-friendly for you and for your use. The following presentation is about advanced energy audits in the industry. So after this brief overview of ProSIM, let me speak about the pinch methods also named the pinch analysis. First, the scope of the method. When we speak about pinch analysis, we speak about process. Process needs energy. In one process, it can exist different types of energy. With the pinch, the out and code utility, utilities are highlighted. Out utilities are used to bring energy in the process, whereas code utilities are used to take off energy from the process. The pinch analysis aims to reduce process energy inputs, means out and code utilities. In order to reduce energy input, the pinch technology quantifies the thermal heat recovery inside the process by reducing the utilities. The second result of the method is to give you the appropriate temperature level for utilities using the ground, curve, the ground composite curve we will see just after. And finally, to find ways to value thermal energy or waste it using a heat exchanger network. Let me give you an example. 
we will begin with one core stream. This core stream has to be heated from 30 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius. X axis is the power, the enthalpy, and Y axis is the temperature. The equation for a heat exchanger power is equal to the mass flow rate, F, multiplied by the heat capacity, Cp, multiplied by the deviation temperature, dt. Following this equation, the slope coefficient is 1 divided by Fcp. More the flow rate is high, more the power needed to heat the stream increase. We can also plot the same diagram for the hot stream. This hot stream has to be cooled from 50 to 20 degrees Celsius. The idea of the method is to heat the cold stream with the hot stream using a heat exchanger. So, on the same diagram temperature, depending on power, the hot stream has to be above the core stream or reverse. The core stream has to be below the hot stream, as shown. If we bring closer the two curves until to reach 20 degrees Celsius between the hot and the core stream, we can see that no energy, no heat, is exchanged between the cold and the hot stream. In this case, the cold stream has to be heated completely with an hot utility, and the hot stream of the process has to be cooled completely by a cold utility. If we try to overlap the curve to a temperature deviation of 15 degrees, we can see that a part of the hot stream is cooled by the cold stream. This green area is named the maximum of heat recovery. The remaining parts of the cold and hot stream of the process are still heat and cool by utility. Then, if we try to go further, we will see that if the temperature deviation between the two curves degrees, the maximum heat recovery increases and the utility needs degrees. This deviation is named the pinch, which explains the name of the method. But what are the limits? It is true that if the pinch degrees, the heat recovery increases. So more the pinch degrees, more the energy bill degrees for the company. In the other hand, more the pinch degrees, more the surface area of the heat exchanger, so the investment, the price of the exchanger, increase because of the low value of the pinch. So in theory, an optimal value for the pinch can be found, as we will see later in the presentation. This pinch analysis has been developed in the 80s by Professor Linoff of the University of Manchester. As we understand with the previous slide, the main principle is to reduce the external energy input by exchanging cold and hot stream of the process using the first and the second thermodynamic law. This method is a graphical method and didactic one. It's also a systematic approach which enables global optimization on the whole plant contrary to a local optimization. Indeed, the scope of the method is, is the entire process, the whole process. It's possible to implement local optimization, for example, on the boiler of the process by adding an economizer or reducing purge. This local optimization proposes low or modest benefits. Compared to a global optimization of the process, which enables substantial benefits. 
So, how do we do to run the pinch analysis? First, we need to establish the list of the code and the odd streams of the process for the whole process. That means all the stream heated or cooled in the process. For each flow, each stream, we have to collect the initial and final temperature, but also the mass flow rate, F, and the specific heat capacity, Cp, following the equation of a new duty. This first step is fundamental, and I say it's the trickiest part of the pinch analysis. Indeed, in many case, cases, a tentative of its integration has already been done, and it must be enough. For instance, this process shows an existing heat integration using two heat exchanger between the input and the output of the reactor. In this process, several cold and hot streams exist. For best results, it's interesting to simplify the process with the primary heat duty requirement, that is to say, to remove the integration heat exchanger. The list of the cold and hot stream was simplified to one stream and one hot stream for the process. The second important point when you set up the list of the cold and hot streams is to keep in mind that the utilities are not taken into account in this list. Indeed, the aim of the method is to in decrease the utility requirement, and for this reason, they are not in the list of streams. The utilities are used in a second time after the heat integration of the process by the method. Another important thing is the number of streams and the stream data of each process stream. And the fact that the process can run in batch tank, batch session. In this case, streams are not available on continuous, and thus these streams have to be removed from the method. The missing data and the relative high number of streams make the method more tedious. Nevertheless, this data collection is the most important part of the pinch method to get good results. The more the data are accurate, the more the heat energy integration is relevant. So after the data collection, we obtain a list of cold and hot streams. Compared to the previous example with only one hot stream and only one cold stream, how can we plot the different stream in the same diagram? The diagram temperature depending on enthalpy, on power. It's quite simple in reality. First, plot the independent streams in the same diagram next to each other. For each section, each temperature on the temperature axis, we count the number of streams for a specific range of temperature. If it exists just one stream, we directly plot these streams for the specific temperature range. In this case, it's the upper and the lower part of the diagram where just one stream exists. For the middle part, two streams exist. For pinch analysis, the average value of the FCP is used for this specific temperature range. It looks like we mix the two streams. This tape is used to build the composite curve of the hot streams in order to obtain a continuous curve. 
Following the example, it exists now three segments for the hot composite curve. The same work is done for the cold stream. At the end, two composite curves are available. One is the cold composite curve, and the other is the hot composite curve. As we have done previously for two streams, we now have to move the cold composite curve below the hot composite curve. When the vertical distance means the pinch between the curves is reached, we stop to move. With this graphical method, we can now directly read the minimum quantity of code and hot utility requirement, and more interesting, the potential heat recovery within the process, the green area. So we sum up the results of the method. By defining a pinch, a process pinch, the method gives the minimum code utilities requirement, the minimum hot utilities requirement, and the maximum heat recovery for each pinch. The next, the next question is, how do we do to choose the value of the pinch? As I said before, in theory, an optimal value of the pinch could be computed, taking into account the cost investment of each heat exchanger depending on energy savings. In reality, this plot and this optimal value is not so simple. This chart is computed considering for for example, just one type of heat exchanger, shell and tubes, using a simple equation to calculate the cost of the equipment. In reality, in most cases, you can take advantage of several technologies that return on investment become interesting. For this reason, typical values are used in the different industry domains as shown in this table. The average value is around 10 degrees Celsius, except for cryogenic application for which exchanger are really efficient and pinch of three degrees Celsius can be rich. By defining a realistic pinch value, we can now compute the target and obtain the results of the pinch method. One of the final steps of the method is to plot the ground composite curve, also named GCC. This curve is used to establish the appropriate level of temperature for the utility. The plotting of this curve is really easy. First, we move up the cold composite curve of half of the pinch value. We do the same with the hot composite curve, but we move down. The two curves touch each other. With this curve, we can now plot the ground composite curve. Just by plotting the same distance in the temperature enthalpy diagram. By consequence, we get the value of the minimum cold and hot requirement up and down the chart. The inflection point, where the enthalpy is equal to zero, gives the pinch temperature. This pinch temperature is important for the implementation of a thermal cycle like an organic ranking cycle or an heat pump. With this curve, we can calculate the energy requirement, means the quantity of utilities requirement, but also the quality of 
the UTC we will use to eat or cool the rem remaining process stream after the integration. This pinch temperature divided the integration into two parts. The system up above the pinch temperature requires input of energy, whereas the part below the pinch temperature rejects it from the process. This ground composite curve is also used to detect the opportunity to place a thermal cycle on the process. In the displayed example, we remove the hot utility requirement name hot utility one, and we remove the cold utility one by implementing an heat pump. In this case, the heat pump enables great utility saving. So now we know how many heat recovery is available in our process. The aim is to recover the heat by finding a heat exchanger network. This step is named the synthesis of the heat exchanger network. To build this network, several approaches exist. The first one is the Linux one, the graphical one. The problem is divided into two parts and the heat exchanger network is built independently in each part. Each heat exchanger is implemented one by one depending on rules given by the author. This approach is quite tedious and not really adapted for industrial cases where the number of cold and hot streams are significant. The second approach is the mathematical one. This approach is based on optimization. This method is based on equations solved with optimization. It gives good results, but it's not a method appropriate for most of the actual processes in industry because the optimization is based on a single one type of heat exchanger, for example, shearing tubes, and because convergence is not sure and time, com time computing is quite long for industrial cases. The third method to build the heat exchanger network is the stimulus pinch approach. Stimulus pinch is the specific tool of ProSIM dedicated to the synthesis of efficient heat exchanger network. The network proposed by Simulus Pinch is not the optimal one, means it doesn't recover systematically 100% of the maximum heat recovery, but it's the efficient one, corresponding with industrial expectation. Contrary to the math mathematical approach, this one is very fast and thus allow you to test several configurations or industrial constraints. Similar Finch is a tool which gives you the energy target, the composite curve, and ground composite curve, like the pinch method. It's a standalone solution, but it can be linked to a steady state simulator like ProSimplus, for example. Indeed, as we have seen, the critical issue of the method is to obtain the data, temperature, flow rate, and CP of each stream. Using a process simulation like ProSimplus can be very interesting concerning the missing data because the advantage of such a tool is to generate automatically the data from the process. In our software ProSimplus, you can build the process, select the stream you want for the pinch analysis, and export this data automatically in Excel, for example. 
Another method is to use our thermodynamic software named Similis Thermodynamics to compute the temperature or heat capacity you miss for the pinch analysis. This tool is directly used in Excel environment. A process simulator gives you the guarantee of the global consistency. For example, the mass and energy point of view. This software also enables you to generate specification sheets of equipment. Furthermore, you can test the virtual heat exchanger network proposed by the pinch analysis directly in the software. And finally, you can go further with an exergy analysis using our specific unit operation dedicated to the exergy. Following the advantages of Simulis Pinch, the tools perform an automatic and fast design of heat exchanger network. You can analyze the results and the network with a grid diagram, for example. Let me give you an example from references. Authors found an heat exchanger network of five heat exchanger, process heat exchanger, and four utilities heat exchanger. The investment for this network is nearly $151,000. With similar pinch, we obtain a different network, but an equivalent heat exchanger network for the same investment. The efficiency of the network reduces the global utility demands on the process, less out utilities, more cord utilities, but the energy balance is negative. Finally, similar pinch provides a great configuration flexibility. If the user wants to add constraints such as the distance between the two streams or the incompatibility between two streams, it's possible and it's easy to do. This tool is implemented in Excel and for this reason it's easy to use and the user can custom the results according to his will. The main Advantage is the automatic and fast design of stimulus pinch compared to other solutions. Time now for the live demo. Here we go. So, first, I will run ProSimplus. So, I run the software. So this is a process of a cyclohexane plant. The aim is to produce cyclohexane here by mixing and reacting benzene and hydrogen in a reactor. The reactor produces the cyclohexane, which is separate then from other components, first in a flash and then in a distillation column. For this simple process, it exists several energy requirements. One before the reactor, one after the reactor to cool before the flash. The reactor is also cooled by a cold utility. And we can also find energy inputs and outputs before and after the distillation column, in addition to the condenser and the rear boiler. After the build of the simulation, we can run a pinch analysis using directly the pinch unit operation. I find this pinch unit operation in 
the energy efficiency category with the air pump, the OSC cycle, or the boiler. So I click and I drag it on the flush it. If I open the unit operation, the pinch module is really easy to configure. First, you have to provide the pinch value. As default is 10 degrees Celsius. For this example, I just changed and I used 12 degrees Celsius. The second important thing, the second important point is to define the scope of the method, means the streams we will use for the pinch analysis. In this case, the utility of the reactor is model. It is simulated in the flow sheet. So I have to remove this utility streams from the method, as I said in my previous slide of the presentation. So I define the stream of utilities as cold stream. So for the stream's name C1, I, I decided to define it at, as cold utility, like that. The reactor is integrated, and the owner of the plant doesn't want to integrate the reactor with a process called stream because of the security issue. So I decided to remove the, the streams of the reactor from the method for the stream C7. C7. I decided to set it at integrated to remove the stream from the method. As default, uh, these modules propose you to cool down the outlet of the process and to bring these streams to the ambient temperature, meaning to bring the output of the process to the ambient temperature. This method enables you to value the waste stream and to increase the energy potential of recovery. In our case, I decided to not cool cool this stream. So I decided to ignore the streams like that. I say ignore for the outlet of the stream. Then several advanced options exist. Uh, I just change here the method for the calculation of the FCP just to simplify the example. Now it's done. The module is correctly configured, and I can run the simulation. So I click on the green arrow here, and I start a full simulation. So the simulation converge. I can now open the unit operation here, and I go to the report tab. In the report tab, we can see the minimum cold and hot requirement and the maximum energy recovery. In the profile tab here, I can directly plot the ground composite curve here or the composite curve, the hot and cold one like that. So this is my hot composite curve and this is my cold composite curve. As you can see in the report here, the unit operation, the pinch modules, directly pointed out the cold and hot stream with the data here. FCP, inlet, outlet temperature. We can now export these results and made the automatic link with Simulis Pinch in Excel. So to do that, I just close and I click on Excel export here. The Excel file open like that. And at the end of the file, I will find my streams here. So I just have to replace the 
dot by a comma for my decimal separator like that okay so this is the same streams as I found in the unit operation here the same three code streams and the same three odd streams so in Excel now I can use simulus pinch. So to find simulus pinch, I go to the heading of Excel and I click on simulus pinch. So I just change the language for all, like that. So first, I need to select the data. So I click on the button and I have to select the FCV, the input temperature and the output temperature. So I select the three columns here, okay. And then I change the unit. So here it's in kilocal per hour. So I will say it's kilocal per hour and I want to pinch analysis for 12 degrees Celsius. If I run the tool now, it performs and it gives me the same results as the pinch unit operation in ProSimplus. So this is my maximum energy recovery. This is my code, my minimum code utility requirement, and this is my minimum hot utility requirement. I can also view the composite, the hot and cold composite curves as I found in ProSimplus. So here we can see the green area. It's the maximum of energy I could recover in my process. The deal it is now to recover this green area by using a neat exchanger network. So to do this job, I just have to rerun Simulate Pinch. So I reselect the three columns. I go in Simulate Pinch. I select the column. Yes, it's okay. Then I check the box heat exchanger network analysis for the synthesis of the heat exchanger network. Then I go to the following windows. So first parameter that I use to add constraints on the possible heat exchanger. For example, you can import to the software to find only heat exchanger which recovered at the minimum 10% of the maximum energy recover, rec requirement. For this example, I just decided to remove the stream division and to just change the index here of the, of the heat exchanger. Then we will see to use the automatic method here. You can find several criteria for the selection of a neat exchanger. For example, I decided here to choose the most the most powerful heat exchanger on each loop. And for the stop criterion here, the, the three stop criterion, I decided to reach 100% for the energy recovery. I want to recover the total green area. So, there we go. So, the calculation, the software has stopped. The tool doesn't send any other exchange, so it stopped. Here is the grid diagram. So, we can see that the software found two heat exchanger between the stream name C8 and C5. It's the most powerful one. And another heat exchanger between the stream, the hot stream name C15 and the other one, the cold one, is the C12. So if you just have a look on ProSimplus, the C5 is this one, 
and the software say we have to exchange the C5 with C8, so the input and the output of the reactor. It's quite logical. And the other one exchanges is between the input and the output of the colon, the C12 and the C15 here. So in the results of uh, similar spinch, we can see that the actual network with just two heat exchangers, we recovered nearly 100% of the total energy potential. The tool gives you then all the characteristics and feature of the process heat exchanger, the two integration heat exchanger here. So we have the characteristics. And the characteristics of the remaining utility heat exchanger here. So it, ex it still exists one cold utility heat exchanger and three hot utility heat exchanger. So then I decided to simulate this network directly in ProSimplus, just to have a check. So I open directly the simulation. So here is my network with the first one, heat exchanger, the powerful one, and the second one here. In the pinch unit operation here, in the advanced tab, advanced option tab, I can check the box here, integration potential printing, to check the remaining heat energy integration. So I check the box and then I rerun the simulation. So in the report of the pinch unit operation, I found the same results as I found in Simulis Pinch. Nearly 100% of the energy recovery for the heat exchanger network, the utility requirement, the real, the actual utility requirement are really close to the minimum of the method. So it's a good energy integration for this process. Simple, but good. So here is a simple example of use of ProSimplus and similar pinch for energy integration. So now we come back to the presentation. We have seen how to perform a pinch analysis and the different software associated to this pinch method. The next part of the presentation is about advanced energy audits in the industry. Within the European Union, energy audits are mandatory for most of the company. In France, for instance, the energy audits are mandatory for company with more than 250 employees or more than 50 million dollars of turnover. This audit has to cover more than 80% of the energy bill. This type of audit are not really detailed. It's a walk through audit, and the main objective is to comply with law and regulation. ProSim performed energy audits, but we are not in the same market. We propose advanced and detailed energy audits. During our detailed audit, we first do an assessment of the energy target using the pinch analysis. An advanced energy audit is divided in three parts. First is the first contact. During this phase, the energy expert gets the preliminary description of the plant and assesses and agrees with the plant owner for the audit objective and scope. Scope is really important for the pinch analysis, as you understand. 
Then it's the data gathering, the data collection. As we have seen before, this step is the fundamental step to get readable and useful audit results. Issues during audits generally come from this crucial step. After this data collection, some data could miss. ProSIM can use ProSIM Plus or other software of the ProSIM Suite software to simulate all or part of the process to get this missing data. The next step is the pinch method, the pinch technology. Simulish pinch can be used to assess the minimum of code and hot utilities and the maximum of its energy recovery. This step is a real diagnosis of the process. With a complete data collection, it's possible to compare the hot and cold utility consumption and compare this consumption with the minimum requirement. More the actual consumption is far from the minimum requirement, more the improvement and the energy saving are interesting. After this step of assessment and determination of the target, it's possible to propose improvement. This second step is the energy process integration. It's the valuable part of stimulus pinch. The tool gives to the expert an automatic solution for the heat exchanger network. Using Simulus Finch, the expert can add constraints directly in the software, such as distance between the stream, the fact that some streams are incompatible, they cannot exchange. Simulus Finch demonstrates to be very powerful and efficient tools for these steps. The last part of the advanced audit is the proposition of improvement. First, the experts can propose corrective action on the unit operations of the process. For example, change of the distillation column flooding or reduce steam venting or reduce operating temperature or pressure of the unit operation. These corrective action can lead to huge energy efficiency improvement. Keep in mind that this light improvement requires a good control and knowledge of the process. Indeed, the main objective of the owner of the plant is to reduce the energy consumption without degrading the quality of the process, without degrading the quality of the product from the process. That's why generally the operators are reluctant to change some operating condition of their process. In fact, the pinch analysis doesn't change operating condition of the unit operation of the process, which explains the interest of the, of the method. Similarly, pinch proposes and suggests a new heat exchanger network to recover the maximum of energy and thus reduce the utility requirement. In addition to the pinch method, the thermal cycle, the modification of utility level or cogeneration opportunity can be tested and simulated directly in a process simulation. An energy, an energy, an energy analysis can be also performed. This analysis is complementary to the pinch analysis and pointed out opportunities of methanization or combustion of waste stream. Finally, when the global proposition on the world plant has been viewed and treated, the expert can propose local optimization. For instance, on the utility production, improve the efficiency of the border by adding an economizer on the flu gas tax, improve the condensate recovery, reduce purge. Local optimization are still proposed after global improvement. 
So to conclude this presentation, you understand that Prosim has long experience in the field of energy efficiency. A team of engineers trained to perform this advanced energy audit. Our process background allows us to go much further than a simple mandatory audit and for any process. The results obtained are usually a reduction of 20% of the energy bill, but some units reduce their energy needs over 40%. The return on investment of this advanced audit is usually lower than one year. Final word, to say that our technology are mature and tools available in our ProSIM Suite software. Gains energy subjects may be substantial in order to reduce energy needs and make your industry green in the future. You can find below links to our training station to Simulis Pinch for Pinch integration and to ProSIM Plus feature for our study state process simulator. I have to thank you again for the quality of your listening and being here today. ProSIM engineers are there to guide you to efficiency, so feel free to contact us for more details. Well, thank you very much, Quentin, for this presentation. Uh, we got uh, many questions. Uh, you, we could not answer all of you, so uh, we will get back to you uh, via phone or email to the question we could not answer. Thank you again for your participation. We hope that the webinar met your expectations. ProSIMS teams remain at your disposal to collaborate with you on your simulation and optimization project. Uh, many of you also ask me uh, if we will send the recording of the webinar afterwards. The answer is yes. Uh, maybe not tomorrow, but uh, probably next week all uh, person who, who, who registered sorry, to the webinar uh, will uh, receive the recording. Uh, also at the end of this Webinar, uh, if you don't mind, please take a few seconds of your time to answer the question about the webinar that will appear on your screen. Uh, it will help us to improve our presentation. And uh, so don't hesitate to let us or your comments. Thank you very much, and uh, bye, everybody. I hope you have a pleasant evening or a good day. Bye-bye.